Now we're in Texas. The state Supreme Court has temporarily blocked a Dallas woman's emergency abortion. It is unclear when that court might issue a final ruling on the merits of this case, but the clock is ticking for Kate Cox, who's 20 weeks pregnant. She's been going to the hospital. Doctors could face criminal prosecution if they perform an abortion after a fetal heartbeat is detected. That's at about six weeks. The only exception in Texas is for medical emergencies. The Attorney General, Ken Paxton, has already said Cox's pregnancy does not qualify as a medical emergency. Scripps News Justice Correspondent Jamal Andrews, who is based in Texas where this is happening, joins us live now from Dallas. Jamal, get us up to speed. Seems like over the weekend, a lot of consternation. Where does the case stand now? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, look, this is a historic case in so many ways. First of all, just to set the scene here, this is the first time that lower court ruling in Austin, that was the first time in 50 years since Roe v. Wade was decided that a court stepped in to give permission to a woman to have an abortion. But again, let's, let's back up and sort of let you know how we got here. First of all, uh, Kate Cox, a Dallas area mother of two, found out that her pregnancy was going to be non-viable on November 28th. A week later, she files a lawsuit with the Texas state court there in Austin, essentially saying that, that, that she needs to have this procedure done and that her situation is an emergency. Um, going to that idea that emergency procedures are allowed under this Texas restrictive abortion ban. Then Thursday, December 7th, she appeared in front of that Austin judge, and that is when that judge made the historic ruling granting her permission to receive that abortion. Just that evening, before midnight, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton stepped in and filed that emergency petition with the Texas Supreme Court. A day later, the Texas Supreme Court, as you alluded to, just steps in and halts this uh, procedure from moving forward. So I think, again, I can't overstate the, the, the importance and the historic nature of this decision. What makes this even more interesting, Chance, is that as this was all going on, Friday, a anonymous woman in Kentucky filed a similar lawsuit essentially saying that the state's abortion ban is violating her right to privacy. And so that could be making its way through the Kentucky court system. And so, you know, unfortunately, potentially, you might have all of these different cases happening in so many different places all at one time, um, uh, this sort of setting a precedent in, in many ways uh, that we could see throughout the country, Chance. Right, and we always knew policy would merge into the real world, and now we see it. Kate Cox, you know, her future fertility is on the line, her doctors say, and, you know, she really wants to be a mom again, and no matter where you stand on the law or abortion even, you know, just to see this woman crying and talking to a judge, and, you know, it, it's, it's emotional. Uh, the attorney general, though, says this is not a medical emergency. Yes, maybe she's been to the hospital several times, and she's even leaking fluid, but it's not an emergency under state law. What are the next steps if the Supreme Court rules against her? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, look, that question, the idea of what is an emergency is really what this case hinges on, or in, in many ways, what the Texas state law hinges on, and another case that is before the Texas Supreme Court, all sort of going to this ultimate question of what qualifies as a medical emergency to allow this kind of procedure to move forward. You know, abortion advocates say everyone wants to know what these exceptions are and that the state won't tell them. The Center for Reproductive Rights is representing Kate Cox in court. Uh, their lawyer, Molly Duane, that's one of the things that she mentioned. She also said this in reaction to the Texas Supreme Court uh, stepping in and halting this abortion procedure. She said, in this case, we fear that justice delayed will be justice denied. We are talking about urgent medical care. Kate is already 20 weeks pregnant. This is why people should not need to beg for health care in a court of law. And again, you know, I want to mention that one of the other things that she said in a press conference shortly following uh, that decision is that the Texas Attorney General has sent out letters um, to three different hospitals that would have been the ones to potentially carry out this procedure for Kate Cox making threats, you know, 100K plus in fines, uh, potentially going after these doctors' medical licenses, as well as felony criminal charges. And so you have a situation where doctors are scared to move forward to, with the, the procedure that they may feel is correct for that patient. Chance. Jamal Andrews joining us live from Texas where the case is still playing out. Thank you.
Now, Kate Cox, as Jamal said, has experienced adverse medical symptoms from her pregnancy. Cox's doctor says she needs an abortion. Her attorney, Molly Duane, with the Center for Reproductive Rights, argued that in court Thursday. Duane says continuing the pregnancy will put Cox at risk for serious medical issues. Attorney General Ken Paxton has argued her life is not at risk, so she does not qualify for a medical exemption. Uh, Molly Duane joins us now. Thank you so much for being with us on Scripps News Live this afternoon. Now, you're in a whole holding pattern awaiting the state Supreme Court's decision. Uh, as you said in, in an earlier statement, justice delayed can be justice denied. I mean, this has been led by Republicans, so there's a good chance the panel will deny the emergency abortion. What happens next and could the case end up at the Supreme Court? Well, I want to emphasize a few things, right? We filed this case about a week ago, and while that is a short amount of time for a court, that is a very long amount of time for a real patient in need of emergent health care. Um, Ms. Cox has been, you know, showing immense fortitude in light of the situation that she is in. But think about how you would feel, you know, hearing on a Friday night that the Texas Supreme Court, the highest court in your state, has put a hold on your medical procedure and then spending the whole weekend, in her case, in bed, just waiting to hear more information about how judges and politicians in her state are, are feeling about her health care. And this is just not a reasonable way for health care to proceed in this country. So I, I really ask people to think about what they would do, who they would want in the in the exam room with them, their doctors or politicians. Now, even if Cox is allowed to have the emergency procedure, Texas residents can still sue any doctor performing an abortion in the state. Um, does this worry her doctor and how can they get around this? Can they get around this? Well, I think this is what's so disturbing about what's going on right now is that Attorney General Paxton is saying, I can and I will come after any doctor who provides an abortion for, for Kate Cox. I mean. Is this how things are going to go moving forward? And, you know, people often tout, well, there are medical exceptions to the abortion bans or rape and incest. I want to be really clear. Those exceptions do not actually exist in practice. And this is just one of many examples of why that is true. Because if Kate Cox doesn't qualify for an emergency abortion, then I don't know who does. Well, and she has, you know, found that her fetus has trisomy 18, that fatal genetic condition um, that not only could endanger her life, her future fertility, um, but doctors have said that that baby, if it survives at all, will not have a long life. As you said, an extremely emotional, horrible situation for any family to go through. Um, but will you tell us about Cox and how she's doing right now, both emotionally and physically with all of this? I mean, without divulging too much about my client's condition, I will say that it has been a very trying time for her. You know, she and her family are experiencing the loss of a child. They have two young children now. They desperately want to grow their family, but they recognize that this pregnancy is not going to be what will allow their children to have another sibling. And they want to be able to try again. Ms. Cox has had two prior C-sections. Each time a patient has a C-section, the risks increase. And so for her health, for her family, this is the right decision. And I just would ask folks to think about who do they want to be able to decide? Should a family be able to decide how they grieve and how they grow their families? Or should politicians and judges and courts be, be in the mix? And if it were me, I would just want to be able to decide with my family can certainly understand how emotional uh, this situation is for her and her family right now. Uh, overall, how dangerous would you say it is for pregnant women in Texas right now? I think it's safe to say that it's extremely dangerous to be pregnant in the state of Texas. Not only are patients being routinely denied health care that they need, time-sensitive care, in this case an abortion, it's happening all the time. So for as amazing as, as my client is being in this situation by putting her life and her medical records out there for the public to judge, I want folks to think about how many other patients and families are struggling with needing health care that they cannot access in their home communities. This is what abortion bans look like in practice. And it is just so cruel. It is so inhumane. And I, I really hope for Ms. Cox, but also for our country in general, that people recognize this, that they wake up 
and that they realize that their health is on the line just like hers. Yeah, you can talk about policy back and forth all day, but this is the real life impact. Molly Duane, senior staff attorney at the Center for Reproductive Rights, thank you so much for talking with us. And in the next hour, we'll talk to a doctor about what exactly trisomy 18 is, also called Edwards syndrome. That's at 1.30 p.m. Eastern.